Okay, we're going to take a look at water and specifically we're going to be taking a look at the structure of the water molecule. You should be able to recognize that this is an H2O molecule and as a result of an H2O molecule there are two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. The oxygen atom ends up being partially negative charged and the hydrogen atoms end up being partially positive charged because the oxygen atom is a little bit more electronegative. So if you take chemistry you'll understand this concept of electronegativity where certain atoms can pull electrons closer to them and because electrons are negatively charged you end up with this kind of uh, polar charged molecule where one side becomes more negative with respect to the other side so the other side we say is partially positive as a result so because of this unequal sharing of electrons here's our result oxygen has a partial negative charge and hydrogen has partially uh, positive charge and this has huge consequences for the interaction of water molecules with themselves and with other molecules as well. So from your basic understanding of how magnets work and how north attracts south and positive attracts negative, you can see that if you have two adjacent water molecules, they tend to want to arrange themselves where the positive is attracting the negative and it forms something called a hydrogen bond, which is pretty unique to water. There are a few other molecules that have hydrogen bonds. Usually they have nitrogen in them or oxygen in them or fluorine in them, which are also very highly electronegative atoms. But in this case, we're just focusing on how water interacts with itself. And in this case, this hydrogen bond is really important. In some of the subsequent videos or in the syllabus, you'll see that we like to compare water with methane and by comparing water to methane they're both small molecules but methane doesn't form hydrogen bonds and so the properties end up looking very very different so this hydrogen bond is an intermolecular force which means there's a force in between molecules here's one water molecule here's another water molecule this can be also be described as a permanent dipole to a permanent dipole interaction when you have this hydrogen bond forming as a result of this the bonds that are actually holding the water molecule together, so the bond connecting this O to the H and this O to the H, they're actually covalent bonds. So we need to distinguish between covalent bonds and hydrogen bonds and also ionic bonds, which will come later. But for now, these covalent bonds are actually stronger than the hydrogen bond. Otherwise, this water molecule will be breaking apart into its constituent atoms and it wouldn't be water anymore. So the hydrogen bond helps to hold these water molecules together, but it doesn't actually change the chemical properties of the actual water molecule. But the way they interact as a whole will produce all sorts of other types of effects that we'll be seeing a little bit later. Water molecules and hydrogen bonds just tend to follow the same laws of thermodynamics that involve other types of bond breaking and bond making. So you have energy being released when a hydrogen bond is made and energy being used when a hydrogen bond is broken. And this is going to have consequences for many of the different properties of water that allow uh, life to exist. You can see here the way that they're arranged. Uh, the positives and negatives are not shown here, but if you remember, oxygen is negatively charged, hydrogen is positively charged. These are all partial charges, but it's enough to allow these kinds of uh, interactions to happen. And so when you put a whole bunch of water molecules together, you start to get this kind of very open looking regular pattern lattice. And we'll find out a little bit later, but because of this open pattern, this very open uh, structure that's being formed, solid water, in other words, ice, ends up being less dense than the liquid form. And I think as far as I know, water is the only substance where the solid form is actually less dense than the liquid form, which means it actually floats. So next time you put some ice cubes in your drinks, you can actually experience this and see that the ice cubes are floating at the top. You may think that's pretty normal, but as a result of that, all kinds of consequences result. For example, lakes freezing over in the winter. The entire thing doesn't turn to ice, just the top layer. You can skate on the top and the fish can swim underneath very happily. So the final message to leave you with here is to understand the importance of the hydrogen bond and to understand that a water molecule is considered to be polar. As a result of these two things, you can pretty much explain all the other properties of water. For example, the high 
specific heat capacity of it, the high latent heat of vaporization. There's a lot of different properties of water which have these big words, but when you apply them to significance to life, it's going to make a lot more sense. So remember, when you're thinking about all the properties of water, as we go through them in the next few videos, you have to constantly be thinking back to the original structure of the water molecule, its polarity, and the fact that it forms hydrogen bonds between uh, their molecules.